Wow. Welcome to day 13 guys. Uh, we are just one more day away from two weeks. Um, and yeah, we are doing pretty good. So in the last video, we created this pause and unpause button. And uh, let's see what we are going to be doing in this video. So in this video, what I want you uh, want to teach you guys is uh, how to arrange these three buttons in a left to right horizontal kind of a manner. So right now they are in a vertically stacked kind of a manner. Um, if you see all these widgets are kind of vertically stacked from uh, top to bottom, which is good for this volume and this text at the top, but it's not good for these three buttons, which you want to be arranged from left to right in a horizontal kind of manner. So before that, let's understand uh, how these uh, how these buttons and how these widgets, all of these widgets are currently arranged. So we are using something known as layout managers to arrange all of the widgets inside a Kinta window. So layout managers, you can also understand them as helpers, which kind of help us arrange all of these different buttons and widgets inside a Kinta window. So these layout helpers are of two types. The first type is kind of the pack layout helper or the pack layout manager and the second type which we haven't used till now is known as the grid layout helper or the grid layout manager now the thing is that you can't use the pack layout manager and the grid layout manager at the same time until you are using something known as frames but more on that a little bit later so right now we are using the pack layout manager now what pack layout manager does is is that it automatically arranges i just had a lot of saliva in my mouth and i just had to swallow it i don't know why i'm telling you guys disgusting all right <laughs> so what this pack layout manager does it does is that it arranges all of these widgets from top to bottom in a vertical kind of stacking manner what if we want to arrange it in a horizontal kind of manner so what we need to do for that is known use something side equals to left and that's not even going to be enough. So if you, you, we have not put anything inside any kind of argument inside this dot pack uh, kind of a function. If you see this uh, status bar, this is actually the only place where we have used any anything inside this dot pack. We have used no, something known as side equals to bottom. And th this helped us fix this thing at the bottom of our uh, kind of window which we exactly want with these three buttons. We want this play button to appear on the left and then this pause button to appear on the left of this play button. And then we want this pause button to appear on the left of this uh, stop button. So let's try it out, but uh, spoiler alert, it's not gonna work and it's going to look horrible. But still, because we are experimenters, we are just gonna try it out. So we are gonna write side equals left, not L, side equals left. And by the way, we are going to be learning about the grid system tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, really excited about that. But for today, let's focus on dot pack layout manager and something known as frames. So yeah, let's uh, right side equals left on all, all three of all these three uh, buttons. And then let's just reload it. Now we are why we are just uh, writing something inside these three play buttons, not why inside the scale and the status bar, because this text at the top, this label, and this uh, volume and this status bar are already at perfect position. So I just, there's no need to mess with them. Why you want to mess with these three is because we want to align them horizontally. So that's why I put in side equals to left. Let's reload it and you will see everything breaks fucking loose. This volume is at the top. These buttons are arranged properly, but you want them to be arranged at the top and this status bar, you can't even see it. So that is, this is the reason why we need to use something known as frames. Now what frame will do is that it will isolate, not isolate, it will isolate all these three buttons in a separate manner. So you can just imagine this as a separator, which, or you can imagine this as kind of a division. So this, let me actually remove the side equals to left so that this, uh, I can understand and I can explain it to you properly, basically. So yeah, so now it's properly formatted. It looks more uh, beautiful. Anyways, so you can imagine this top one as a top frame, then this middle one, this all these three buttons at the middle frame, and then you can imagine this uh, bottom part as a bottom frame. Now we only need to mess with this middle part. So why are we even disturbing this bottom and the top part? Why don't we just create a division or a hidden window 
for this bottom and this middle part and then mess with this middle part only and not mess with anything else. Uh, so let's do that. So what we need to do is if you can uh, just go up a little bit, you can see we created this uh, main window using root equals to TK. Uh, similarly, we are going to create kind of create a window inside a window, but you won't be able to see that window. All right, so let's get started. Now to the way to create a frame is pretty simple. What we are going to do, let's uh, add a frame over here. I'm gonna, just going to call it a middle frame because we want a, a kind of a separator for only this middle part and we don't want to do anything to the top and the bottom part because they're already perfect. So I'm just going to write create a variable known as middle frame and then how do you create a frame? It's pretty simple. You just write a frame function. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then where do you want this frame to appear? You always want this frame to appear in the root window, like always. And then um, we are just going to pack this frame like we always do with the widgets. And that's pretty much it. So we have created a frame and make sure that it's in the root window. And then we have packed the frame similar in the similar fashion that we already always do. But the only difference is going to be with the previous code and this code is that instead of root, we'll write middle frame and we'll change it for all the three buttons which we want to isolate. So I'm going to write it over here and then in the last one. All right. So let's reload it. And as you can see, there is no difference that you can see right now. But all of these three buttons are actually being uh, surrounded by this something known as the middle frame. Uh, let me see if I can actually show you uh, the whole middle frame. So I'm just going to use something known as uh, relief, which you have already used in the status bar. So you should be familiar. Instead of uh, sunken, we are going to use something known as raised. And then I'm just going to give it a border width of about uh, one pixel. And that should be enough. Let's reload it. And now as you can see, oh, it's, it's not maybe it's not visible, but you can see all these borders are a little bit more darker. This is because there is one border width surrounding all of these three buttons. And uh, just to prove my point more, I'm going to, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write side equals to left over here. And all of these three buttons don't have a side equals to left. So I'm just going to reload it. And now you can see all these three buttons are on the left hand side. So you can also imagine this frame acting as a grouping thing for all these three buttons. All these three buttons are being grouped together by this middle frame. Uh, now because we don't want everything to be on the left, we want this play button to be on the left. Then we want this pause, uh, the stop button to be on the left of this play button. And similar thing with this pause button, we want it to be on the left of the stop button. So instead of putting everything as side equals to left, we'll go to individuals one, individual uh, play buttons or uh, photo images or uh, photo buttons and we are going to put inside equals to left for each of them and that should be good enough. So let's put inside equals to left, side equals to left, side equals to left. Let's reload it and now you can see all of these three buttons are properly stacked uh, on the left hand side from left to right. So this is the work of the of the frames that it kind of helps first of all it kind of helps isolate not it kind of helps it actually helps isolate the portion that you actually want to edit and that is not perfect so because these three buttons were not perfect that is why we had to isolate them and then secondly it kind of acts as a grouper so if i want to do something uh, crazy with all of these three uh, three buttons at the same time then also this frame uh, helps us out you can also imagine this frame. Actually, let me just uh, do a couple of more things. Then I'll get back into frames just to make sure that you understand it properly. All right. So the first thing I want to do is uh, actually, let me just show you. I want to remove this root dot geometry at the starting, which we used. So I'm just going to scroll up a little bit and go to this root dot geometry. Uh, you must remember this. We are kind of forcing 300 width into 300 height right now. And now there is no need to actually force it because we are going to add something to our Kinter window. Let's reload it and see how it looks. All right. So now it appears a little bit more smaller. 
So let's add some spaces uh, because it looks a little bit congested right now. So we are going to add something known as padding inside a Kinta window. If you have worked with web development before, it should be pretty easy for you to understand. For if you're not familiar with web development, padding is basically adding some space. So this, if you remember, I've already talked about it somewhere, but the vertical line is known as a Y axis and the horizontal line is known as the X axis. So the first thing that I can see is that this text, let's make some noise, requires some Y padding, some space on the Y hand side because it's a lot, it's, it's, it's congested right now. So I'm going to go to this text label and I'm going to write pad Y equals to maybe 10 pixel and let's reload it and see what's up. And now you can see there's actually some space between top and the bottom. All right. It's starting, local, starting to look a little bit a little bit better not a lot better but a little bit better but by the time we are done with these buttons it's going to look a lot more better so now we are going to come uh, to this play photo so what i want to do is basically have some space between top and the bottom of all these three buttons and then i also want some space on the left and the right of all three three buttons so i can treat them as a group and have some space at the top at the bottom and on the left on the right so what we are going to do is we are going to use the frame for this and then i'm going to write pad x which is basically stands for padding in x direction equals to 10. Uh, let's reload it and now you can see there is some space on the left hand side and the right hand side and now i also want some space on the top and the bottom so i'm also going to write pad y equals to 10. let's reload it and now there's some more space between top and bottom but I also want space but between these individual uh, buttons or you can call them photo buttons so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside each of this button and uh, write pad X because I want space in the X direction that is left to right direction between these buttons that is why I'm writing pad X equals to maybe let's write out 10 and see what's if it's good enough let's reload it and yeah padding 10 actually looks good uh, so let's copy and paste it on all of these three areas. Let's copy this uh, comma also because we are lazy. And now we'll reload it. And now you can see all of these three buttons are appearing separately and there's a little bit of space uh, between them. Now you can see there's this border that's coming around, right? And this border, which is not part of the buttons, is because of the frame. We are put in relief equals to raise and border width of one pixel. That's why this line is actually uh, showing up over here. We don't need it. I was just showing it for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to remove it. Let's reload it again. All right. It looks a lot better, but I want some space below this volume also. So I'm just going to put in a pad Y equals to maybe 10. Let's reload it. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, more. Uh, it looks fine. Maybe like 15 or something. Yeah, this looks perfect. So now we have put in some space in the Y axis of volume. So if it has more space at the bottom and now everything looks a little bit more free, a little bit more uh, not congested and a little bit more beautiful. So in this video, we learned about three things. We first learned about the side equals to left, which helps us position uh, the widgets in a proper manner or the elements of a widget, for example, buttons in a proper manner. We learned about the frame. Uh, I just want to revise what a frame is. So you can imagine if you're into web development, you can imagine them as divisions uh, inside a website. But if you're not a web developer, let's take example of this PyCharm project. So this top part of PyCharm is you can imagine this as a top frame and then this can be as a middle frame where we are writing the code and we have all the project files and then this bottom part can be a bottom frame and that's how they have isolated all of these three things so that they don't affect each other. Now you can have as many frames as you want. You don't need to have just one frame or you can also understand them at divisions. So at the top, there is the top division, then middle division, and then the bottom division, but there can be more than one divisions, right? 
and uh, so that's why you can imagine this as even top division and then middle left division where you are seeing the project files and then the middle right division and then bottom division and you can even divide this bottom into a lot of divisions or frames whatever you like to call it so this is the idea of uh, frames or divisions so the function of frames is two parts first it helps us kind of isolate the area that we want to change in our kinter window and the second work of frames is kind of acts as a group so you can make these three buttons move at the same time instead of going in individually and changing the properties of the buttons one by one uh, so yeah that was a, a, a very easy complex if you get a hang of it just try and experiment with different values put in instead of side equals to left try putting in side equals to right and stuff like that and see what is happening in your uh, kinter window and uh, just try out different things and you'll get the hang of it now this is the method that i don't like that much to be honest because it's not very natural all right uh, you can use pack if you want to it's totally fine because we'll be using a uh, pack in this status bar and uh, in this uh, maybe in this label but i want to use the grid system in this middle part all right uh, and that is the third function of frames frames so you can't use the two layout managers in the same python file that's a problem but you can solve this problem when you are using frames uh, but we'll discuss this problem in the next video that is for day 14 uh, so guys this is pretty much it for this video i'll see you on day 14